Wow, guys. Just wow. I don't really know what to say, and frankly, if I want to get this video on time, I can't say a lot, but thank you so much for 600 subscribers. It means the world to me that as many people as in my old junior high would even consider subscribing to me, so thank you. Anyways, on to the video. Wow, that was a really good video. I wonder if it's been done any other times. Let's see. Mario Wii, you, you again, 3D World, Galaxy, 3D Land, Galaxy again, Super Mario Galaxy again, 64. Wow! No, it hasn't. That's crazy! Is it possible to beat new Super Mario Bros while always crouching? The rules are very simple for this challenge. The whole game, I have to be holding down. The only exception is going in pipes or doors. I'm also not allowed to use the mini or mega mushrooms, because both of those you aren't even allowed to crouch, which defeats the whole purpose of the challenge. And the final rule, this one's super important. You guys have to subscribe and join my Discord server. Link in the description and comment section. Starting with 1-1, it's a very good playground for the way we will be playing this game. The level isn't too hard, but it does show the first interesting mechanic of this game. If Mario jumps onto an enemy, he will use his regular jumping animation. This is completely allowed because I'm still pressing down, Mario is just being a goofball, but with that we'll move on to 1-2. Overall, 1-2 is very easy, once again just being a tutorial for the game, so we can go straight into 1-3. 1-3 was a mushroom level and has those platforms that you jump and you spin around on. Once again, they're completely allowed because if we hold down, we immediately start falling and oh, the level's over. 1-Dash Tower is definitely harder than the previous levels. The moving platforms were difficult since we can do small adjustments to land on the platforms better. Of course, we jumped back down to grab the secret exit skipping to world 5 and... oh. Looks like we'll be taking the normal exit and have to play through way more levels than I was expecting. Luckily, Bowser Jr. was easy as he's ever been, so on to 1-4. Speaking of, 1-4 was once again a very easy level, but this happened, and I don't know if I stopped crouching or what, but it was pretty cool. 1-5 was a bouncy mushroom level, and most of the level, it doesn't look like I'm crouching, but trust me, I am. After dying, I brought a red question mark block into the level and got the blue shell power. Oh man, I can't wait to use the... Yeah, no, th this isn't that useful. After ditching the blue shell, the level was very easy. Okay, the whole point of the first castle is these tightropes, which once again, pressing down does nothing, but I promise I'm crouching. There was this falling spike ceiling, which wasn't hard, but I definitely went too fast and had a very close call. And now it gets tricky. We have to defeat Bowser and yeah, no, no, never mind. It was easy. 2-1 has a bunch of pokies, which made a lot of the platforming much more precise and a little sketchy, but still easily doable. Although I am bad and I died here, but I did hit the checkpoint, so hooray! Then I had to go mow the lawn, but I don't think you care about that. Coming back to 2-2, it was a Lakitu level. I was speedrunning the whole thing until this little section where I learned you can hit a block by a Lakitu to kill it. Interesting. Now we are in 2-3, the sewer level, and this level is one of my favorites, so I can't wait to play it. Oh, that's not good, but don't worry, I have a plan. I restarted the level and when I went down the pipe, I jumped to land on a Koopa, allowing me to lure it down to the hole, meaning I could jump on it and not ground pound. Although, I might not be in a crashing state, since I'm still holding down, I'm incapable of ground pounding. So now we're in a very interesting situation. We physically can't beat 2-3 at all, and we can't take the secret exit in the World 1 tower, so I had to brainstorm. I thought maybe I could take a secret exit in 2-1 or 2-2 to skip past 2-3, but coincidentally, the only secret exit is in 2-3, which clearly won't work. It appears that we've reached an impossible scenario, and with nothing to do, I let go of crouch and ground pounded. Just kidding, of course I have an epic way to get past this. After messing around through World 1, I had exactly 6 star coins, which was exactly 1 extra to open the gate to the mushroom house after 2-2, and I was able to get a blue shell. Now if you're a very astute viewer who paid at least 1 star coin worth of attention, you would remember that the blue shell isn't too useful, which is what I thought too, but it turns out to be pretty useful. Heading back to the World 1 tower, I entered back to the secret exit and clicked my nice little button in the corner of the bottom screen to drop the blue shell from the sky. I hopped as fast as I could and hopped face first into the blue shell which allowed my speed to transfer into the blue shell and I was off to the races. I broke all of the blocks and got to the pipe. Now, if we go back to the rules, they state, 
The whole game we have to be holding down. The only exception is going in pipes or doors. The last time I checked, this is a pipe, and we have full legal responsibility to stop crouching to enter the pipe. Sure, you know, if you think it's cheating, go ahead, I don't care, but come on, I gotta make an interesting video somehow. Now, we aren't out of the woods yet, because after exiting the pipe, we fall straight to the ground and can't do anything, so we have to do everything again, but this time hold left and wall jump from the wall to get enough speed to move with the shell to the flag, and oh baby, that was some epic thing on my part, so, oh, yeah, no, you're too kind, thank you, thank you very much. Alright, with that we can enter the cannon level, and, oh yeah, we still have the blue shell. Now we have to lose the blue shell, so I entered into 1-4 to get hit by the Goombas, and no, we're completely invincible. Every single level that we have unlocked has this problem of a very nice safe area at the beginning, meaning we have no way to die. Okay, so I'm a little bit of an idiot. You can totally enter the tower and just get crushed at the very beginning, but I didn't even think of that. Plus, this was way cooler, so pretend I'm not dumb. By the stars aligning, when I beat the secret exit, the winged question block was exactly on 1-5, which meant I was able to jump onto it and it would ride me off into the sunset of a nice pit killing me. Although I game overed, meaning I had to do it again, so hooray! But at least we made progress and are now in world 5, which is fantastic. Overall, 5-1 was a pretty easy level. It felt about as hard as the level normally, maybe a tiny bit harder. 5-2 was a pretty tricky level. With all the ice around, I was slipping around everywhere and not able to make minor adjustments. Not too bad though. 5 tower was a very average level. Since the platform wasn't covered in ice and there was frequent power-ups, as long as I didn't mess up too bad, it was fine. Bowser Jr. was easy as always. 5-3 started with a nice couple of 1-ups and the level was already halfway over. In the second half there were a bunch of snail corns, which meant there was a lot of semi-precise movements. Not bad though. The World 5 Ghost House had a bunch of bruisers and a ton of staircases. And unfortunately, I wasn't able to take the secret exit since there was a vine that I can't climb since I'm crouching. We'll just have to take the normal exit. 5-4 was an auto-scroller. Yay! Overall, the level was very slow and the mushrooms were very annoying. The castle was a bit trickier than the rest of the world, but overall, it wasn't too bad. There was this section where I had to go under a conveyor, but the conveyor was traveling the other way. I wasn't able to do it, so I got hit, and I think that made a difference. The fight against PD Piranha was easy. 6-1 was definitely a step up from World 5. With all the bullet bills, it was very hard to dodge, and it introduces everybody's favorite rock climbing wall, which wasn't a problem. What was a problem was this wall. It had coins indicating a wall jump, but that ain't possible. So I had to lure a bullet bill from earlier to jump and go out of my crouching state to wall jump. 6-2 is that one beach level that happens to be in the mountain world. Makes sense, I know, but nothing I can do about it. It is the first introduction to swimming, which is easy since you only crouch when you're on the floor. I went into the clouds forgetting that that was the actual way to go, so I dropped back down and had to do it again. 6 Sash Tower had many skewers and precise platforming, but it was definitely not impossible. But I'm just such a natural at playing video games the wrong way. Oh wow, Bowser Jr. still wasn't hard. 6-3 is in the jungle, which also doesn't make sense for the mountain world, but at least it's more original than the later entries. The level once again was not very hard. I did have to commence epic platforming skills for this part though. 6-4 was quite unfortunate. The level is perfectly fine until right above the checkpoint. There's a switch that needs to be pushed which activates a platform and oh crap, I have to wall jump. There aren't any enemies to jump off so it looks like we're going back to the drawing board once again. I'll skip the cutscene where I pretend to be sad and have no idea what to do, because of course I've already finished the challenge and I know that I found a way to get around this level, so let's just go back to the World 5 Ghost House. Clearly if we were back in the Ghost House, we're gonna find a way to get to the secret exit. Originally I threw out trying to get to the secret exit since there was a vine that I can't climb without uncrouching, but there was something I missed. The usual way you get to the secret exit is by climbing up the vine and luring the bruiser to break the blocks and clear a path. I don't think this was thought out enough because if you jump, you get in range of the bruiser, and if timed right, you can do this. With that, we can easily beat the- oh, whoops, I'm a goof. After actually beating it, we are straight into World 8 and on the home stretch. 8-1 was easily the hardest regular level so far. It had a ton of obstacles to dodge, which was very tricky. 8-2 was mostly an underwater level, but in the section with the barrels, I kept being bad, but it was not very hard. Although, I don't know who at Nintendo decided to keep a one block gap at this section, and they better not have gotten fired for it because this makes this level possible. 8 Tower took a long time because I made a lot of little mistakes like getting crushed and being bad. Bowser Jr. learned how to get slightly more difficult, but now nah, it was still easy. 8-3 is another underwater level, so it wasn't any different, but I'm not entirely sure how I lived here. Oh, I guess I didn't. 
8-4 is spiders dropping down from the sky, which is genuinely one of the worst things that could ever happen to me, but the level wasn't that hard. 8 Castle had a ton of moving platforms so you can press a button to switch platforms, but then there was this section. There was a rope swing and a giant gap. I immediately thought that you couldn't climb rope swings, so I tried to make the jump with momentum, but turns out you can and I wasted a long time. Obviously Dry Bowser was super easy, and wow, look, we beat the game. I totally bet there is no surprise twist that the game isn't over. Oh wow, the game isn't over, look at that. 8-5 was a neat level, had a bunch of platforms that fall when you go on them, so it was an interesting idea. Wasn't too bad, wasn't too good. 8-6 is another one of my favorite levels. The whole concept of climbing up an active volcano is amazing, but the wraparound effects just make it so cool. The level was also just generally fun, so that's a win. Just like that, we've been slapped to reality. 8-7 is definitely a level. Approximately 25% of the way into the level, we encounter this. A giant climbing wall where you have to jump. It's physically impossible and there's no way to skip this level. You have to play it. I tried everything from bouncing on a Koopa, running really fast and hail marrying, even grabbing the blue shell just in case, but nothing worked. So unfortunately, no, it's not possible to beat new Super Mario Bros while always crouching. But we've came so close to beating it that we might as well finish now. But if you wonderful viewers have any way to overcome this, I would be so happy. So if you want, try to beat this. I'm not entirely sure what to call it, but let's add a point to the stop pressing crouch for like one frame to jump and then immediately start crouching again counter. Thankfully there isn't anything else troublesome in this level. 8-8 is the wonderful meteors falling from the sky level, but it was really easy. 8- second tower, however, was not easy. If you think about the level, it doesn't seem really hard since it's just a snake block level, but there are two difficult sections. This first section you are meant to casually walk along the snake block since there's a spike ceiling, but that's obviously not an option. Even at the smallest jump possible, you jump more than one block, so you hit the ceiling and die. What I was able to do was have a mushroom, get onto the single block right here, and wait for the snake block to go forward, then full speed ahead and hopefully make it out alive. The second section was similar, by having to be on the single block, but this time drop my blue shell item reserve and move out of the way. Then do some damage boost shenanigans to barely make it. The second half of this level was a cakewalk in comparison to the first half, but it definitely wasn't easy and took many tries. Shockingly, Bowser Jr. was still easy. And oh wow, we're at the final level now. The final level has everything to make me miserable. It has no climbing walls, no wall jumps, no ground pounds, and only very minor gaming chair abilities necessary. It was truly an intense experience with no power-ups for half of it, but certainly not the most difficult thing I've had to do. The final fight was actually pretty tricky. It took multiple tries because of the micro-moving abilities I don't have. Eventually, I was able to do the sickest jump off of Bowser Jr. to ride my way to victory. So. Is it possible to beat new Super Mario Bros while always crouching? Unfortunately not, but you only had to crouch for probably like half a second, so I see this as an absolute win. And hey, this hasn't been done with new Super Mario Bros 2, so you know, maybe we'll be back again. But anyways, subscribe, join my Discord server, and have a great rest of your day. Goodbye.